Hi, my name is Philippe Ozil, I'm a developer advocate at Salesforce, and today I want to show you our latest collection in the Postman ecosystem, namely the Salesforce PubSub API. Now, for those of you who have been following us for some time, you may have noticed that this collection was already available in a staging environment, but we've just recently been able to promote it to our main workspace. All right, so how do you get started? Uh, you can click on the collection and then we'll have a set of, um, of instructions in the readme. I'm gonna guide you through these steps so that we can save a bit of time. So the first thing you wanna do is to prepare an org and you wanna go in your Salesforce org and load, look at platform events. Uh, for the sake of this demonstration and in the readme, I'm advising you to create a sample custom platform event. And this custom platform event has one field which is a message field, which is text. And that's the one we'll use uh, to try out things. The next step is to prepare the Salesforce Platform APIs collection. The PubSub API uh, requires an access token. And so to get the access token, you'll need to rely on the other collection. So you'll want to fork this one and configure it. I've already done this ahead. Obviously, there's also a um, readme in the Salesforce Platform APIs that you can follow. So let's get just get started with the instructions. So the first step is to fork this uh, collection. And to do so, you have the fork button. So to do this, um, I should click here and target a personal workspace. I already prepared this, so I'm gonna go directly in my personal workspace. So in my personal workspace, I have a uh, copy of the Platform APIs collection, and I also have a copy of the Pubs of API collection. So when you look back at the instructions, you create your fork of your uh, pub sub api collection and of course of the platform apis collection and then the next step is to obtain the id of your salesforce user so to do so you go back to your salesforce org we'll need it for the publishing of platform events so i go back in my org and i can click on my avatar here and once more in on my avatar here and i can grab the uh, id from the url now that i have my user id I can then authenticate to the Salesforce Platform API. So to do this, I'm going on the collection. I have already configured it. So all I need to do now is to go in authorization, scroll down and click get new access token. I have to confirm that this is the right user for my org and I accept it. All right, then I get an access token. I will hide it for secure reasons. I will copy it. Then I can close the Salesforce Platform API's collection and no longer need it. Now I'm going back to the pubs of API in the variables tab and I will paste my access token in there. I will save my collection. You can either click save or hit the command S or control S button. Then you only fill all the other variables and the values are documented in the overview tab uh, using the variable reference and the set of instructions. So this, the, the important bit here is that for this specific getting started demo using the sample platform event, we have to set a topic name for the custom platform events. That is slash event slash sample underscore underscore E. And then we also have to configure a sample payload. And to do that, we have a bit of JSON here that we need to copy. Now, this is just a regular payload for our basic sample message. And you'll notice that there, it has the custom field here message mes underscore underscore C. The only message we're saying is hi, obviously feel free to conf configure it the way you want. Now, once this is all done, make sure you do save uh, the variables and we can move on to the next step that is using the collection. So the first request we wanna trigger is get topic. This retrieves the description of our sample platform event and you can see it here. Uh, it has a, an ID and we, have, we are authorized to publish and subscribe for this. ID. Now the important bit here is that we get a schema ID. Behind the scenes, there are a number of scripts in our collection that um, save this information. So the next step is to get the, the schema. So same thing, I'm going to click on invoke here and this will retrieve the schema. The schema defines the structure of our events with the different fields. And so what I'm doing by running get retrieve schema is I am getting a JSON file which contains the schema. There's also a script here that will save it. Now moving on to the next step, subscribing. So subscribing is a bit different because it's a bi-directional request. The first request I do is to open the stream, but nothing will happen then if I just do this. I will need to send a first message here that will require, request one event from our topic. Now at this point, I wanna mention one thing, you have to open the console here because 
we're all going to be receiving messages and sending messages and all of the traffic information will be logged in the Postman console. So it's important that you keep it open at this point. All right, so I'm sending the first message to request one event from the topic. There we go, you can see it's going here. Now nothing is happening at the moment. And so I'm gonna call in the next step, I'm gonna publish an event. And when I'm doing this, the subscribe request is still active. So we're still listening for events. And here I'm gonna be able to publish an event. So you can see that the request is already pre-configured. We have the topic name, we have our schema ID, which is automatically filled for us. And here we have a serialized payload. So on your end, this won't be filled. It's already filled for me because I already sent some events before, but this is what will happen at runtime. At runtime, as soon as I'm gonna click invoke, we're gonna use some, um, some libraries, which is called Avro, to compress our message payload, the one we sent in our collection variables, and create it in a serialized send payload temporary variable. Now, th this is not human readable because this is compressed using Avro and using the schema. So let me do that now. I'm going to click on invoke and we'll look at the console now because you're going to see the event go and being received right away. And that's it. So we saw our first, me first message here, which is our publishing of our message. And you can see here, this is the um, non, uh, non compressed version of the message. That's the copy of what we had in our collection variable. And we also added a created date, which is a required field. Uh, if you do specify a created date, uh, we'll use this one, otherwise we'll automatically add it for you. Then you can see some messages showing the replay ID and the correction key of the sent message and of the recent received message. And here you can see the decoded message, which is exactly the same as the one we sent. You can also track these things in the subscribe tab here. Uh, you'll notice that we have uh, received our response and then we have um, received our event. No, actually, this is just a message that telling us that we're still waiting for one more event. This here, the next one here, is the message. Now, you could take a look at the message here, but you're not going to be able to read anything because the payload here is compressed also with Favro. So we rely on a on-message script to decompress it and show it in the console. You also notice that the call just completed as I was talking. That is because we were no longer waiting for messages and you also saw a message here in the console. That's it. That's how you can use the Pubsub API. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.